the human heart. Lub dub, lub dub, lub dub. Can you hear the heartbeat? A tireless pump. The heart sees us through life every second. Let's first analyze the heart externally. It is a cone-shaped organ about the size of the person's fist, about 12 cm long, 9 cm wide at the base and about 6 cm thick. It weighs about 250 to 350 grams. It is enclosed in a double-layered, tough connective tissue sac, the pericardium. Between the two layers is the pericardial fluid, which reduces friction to a minimum when the heart beats. The heart lies between the lungs in the chest cavity behind the sternum, more towards the left side. Below it is the diaphragm. Let us now examine the interior of the heart. It is four-chambered. The upper two chambers are called atria or auricles and the lower two chambers are called ventricles. The atria are the receiving chambers. The right atrium is separated from the left by the interatrial septum. The right atrium receives deoxygenated blood through the veins of the body, the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava, and from the heart wall by a coronary sinus. The left atrium receives oxygenated blood through pulmonary veins. The ventricles are the pumping chambers, bigger and thicker than the atria. Observe that just like the atria, they are separated from each other by a thick muscular wall called interventricular septum. On the inner wall are cone-like projections called papillary muscles. There is no direct communication between the right and left side of the heart. Nevertheless, the right atrium communicates with the right ventricle through an aperture guarded by the atrioventricular valve, AV, which has three flaps or cusps. It thus gets the name tricuspid valve. Another AV valve is present between the left atrium and the ventricle known as the bicuspid or mitral valve. It has only two cusps. The free edges of these cusps are attached to the walls of the ventricles by collagenous strings called cordae tendinae. The AV valves permit the flow of blood from the atria into ventricles and not in the reverse direction. Let us now meet some of the great vessels of the heart. The right atrium receives deoxygenated blood brought by the superior vena cava from the upper parts of the body. The inferior vena cava does the same, but roots itself from the lower part of the body. The left atrium receives the oxygenated blood from the lungs through four pulmonary veins. The auricles receive the blood vessels, while the ventricles see them, leaving the heart. The pulmonary artery, arising from the right ventricle, branches into two on leaving the heart. It is the only artery that carries deoxygenated blood. Aorta, the largest blood vessel of the body, arises from the left ventricle. It carries oxygenated blood. There are semilunar valves at the entrance from the ventricles into the major arteries. They allow blood to flow from the ventricles into the arteries and not in the opposite direction. AV and semilunar valves function out of sequence, that is, when one set is open, the other is closed. The heart, like all other organs, has its own oxygenation needs. 
coronary arteries supply oxygenated blood to the heart wall and arise from the base of the aorta. The coronary sinus drains the deoxygenated blood.